So ladies and gentlemen, welcome. Today, we're having a discussion with Professor John Lefteriades. He's the professor of cardiothoracic surgery in Yale School of Medicine and also the director of the Aortic Institute in Yale University and Yale New Haven Hospital. Professor, thank you very much for being here. I think that many people will find value in our conversation here. And the best way to start this interview is by analyzing your course in this surgical field. So let's start with the basics. What made you want to become a cardiac surgeon? Well, as a medical student, I really didn't know what I wanted to do, Ambrose. I loved everything. I loved uh, medicine, psychiatry, OB, orthopedics, everything that I encountered, I loved. And it was difficult to make a decision. Uh, but I think I was most drawn to surgery. And then uh, once I started general surgery training, I realized that I wanted to do cardiac. It's what I enjoyed the most. Um, at the time that I was training, it wasn't the early days of cardiac surgery when uh, the, the great pioneers made advances and developed uh, the heart-lung machine and uh, learned how to do coronary bypass and valve replacement. But it was the, the very next era when I was training. So cardiac surgery was still very risky uh, and it was still very exciting. It was like uh, being a fighter pilot, you know, it was still very, very exciting. Now it's become a lot safer to do heart operations and it's still a highly respected field, but uh, it's been developed so far so well that it doesn't have that, that um, uh, uh, danger level that it had when I was training. And that was attractive to to know that you were doing something dangerous, but to pull the patient through. Did you have any mentors along the way that uh, influenced you towards this uh, field? Yes, I had great mentors. I think mentorship is very important at determining the direction that we choose. Mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Glenn is uh, one of the most famous cardiac surgeons of all time. And he was my indirect mentor. He had retired by the time I started, but he was my faculty advisor and a very important mentor for me. So if you could advise medical students, what do you think is the best way to approach uh, the specialty? When is the best time for a new medical student to make his mind? Which factors should medical students you know, consider when uh, approaching this decision? Yeah, I th think the main decision is medicine versus surgery. Mm -hmm. And, um, uh, that that's a difficult decision to make um, uh, for a medical student. Uh, mm -hmm. My uh, dean of students um, refused to sign my application for a surgical residency mm -hmm. because he felt that uh, I would be wasting my mind. He said, you have a very good mind, John. I won't let you waste it. He thought of surgery as a uh, purely technical field. Um, the irony is that uh, about nine years later, I operated on him. You mentioned this in your lived, book, right? Yeah, and then he lived another 25 years uh, without any cardiac problem of any kind. Mm -hmm. uh, lived well into old age. Um, yeah, so I think that's probably the main decision, medicine or surgery. And then from there, you can go in different directions. So... Let's take a step back for a second and look at cardiac surgery as a specialty. So what is really the job of a cardiac surgeon? Many people can't uh, distinguish cardiac surgery from cardiothoracic surgery. So if you could please uh, clear the field here, what is the job of a uh, cardiac surgeon? Well, cardiothoracic surgery was the original designation of our specialty. Mm -hmm. The thoracic part has to do with the lungs and the esophagus. Mm -hmm. And um, I practice both. I practiced both for 25 years. And then eventually thoracic separated off as a different specialty. So now there are very few surgeons who practice both. I love thoracic surgery, general thoracic surgery uh, in the um, chest for the lung and the esophagus, lungs and the esophagus. And it's a different satisfaction when you have a large lung cancer a central lung cancer, and you have to use all of your skills to dissect it out from the vital 
surrounding structures. And then when you finally clamp and cut the bronchus and you lift out that lung with the large tumor inside, and you know that you've gotten that out of the patient, it's a different kind of satisfaction than cardiac surgery. Mm -hmm. Cardiac surgery is, is supremely satisfying, uh, of course, in its own way, but it's different than taking out a, a big central lung cancer. It's a tremendous feeling as a surgeon that you have when you accomplish that. So what operations are uh, involved in this uh, field? What, what are the most common operations of a uh, cardiac surgeon? Well, uh, there are two uh, common categories. One is coronary artery bypass grafting, mm -hmm. where we put um, <clears throat> veins or arteries um, into bypass blocked coronary vessels. And then the other is valve repair or replacement, most commonly for the aortic and mitral valves. Those are the two most important operations general categories in cardiac surgery. Uh, and now aortic surgery uh, has become a specialty on its own as well. Um, aortic surgery was pretty uncommon when I was training, but now with the advent of CAT scans and MRIs and genetic testing and the recognition that aneurysms are familial in nature, uh, we're, we're uh, operating on a lot of aortas, not only at Yale, but uh, really throughout the world. So of course, cardiac surgery and the uh, aortic surgery that you practice uh, mostly, we all know that it is associated with uh, high mortality rates, especially in uh, previous years. How do cardiac surgeons deal with death? Do you carry this bad feeling of a patient dying outside of the hospital? How do you cope with this? Yes, that's a wonderful question. And your, um, your fellow students should be aware, I would say that cardiac surgery has the highest highs and the lowest lows. Mm -hmm. You know, you do a, a huge operation, high risk emergency situation, and almost always you bring that patient through and you leave the hospital that night feeling great. Mm -hmm. But um, uh, in cardiac and aortic surgery, you don't save everyone. Um, when I was training, I think the death rate was probably 10% or higher. So I had a lot of exposure as a resident. Things were not as safe as they are now. Mm -hmm. Now that the survival rate after cardiac and aortic surgery is about 98%. So the lows that you experience are not that common, but it's going to happen. It's going to happen once or twice a year that uh, you can't save a patient and you feel terrible. I remember one time, um, and I put this in, in Extraordinary Hearts, the book, uh, when we couldn't save a 16 year old boy. And I went home and I, Went, went to bed trying to go to sleep and I cried. I couldn't stop crying. Mm -hmm. that, that's the lowest low I have ever felt in my career. Um, but you get over it and, um, and you go on. Mm -hmm. So this is definitely one of the worst parts of uh, this uh, specialty. Mm -hmm. It is, and it happens. And every cardiac surgeon has to deal with it. Mm -hmm. uh, no matter who you are, you know, you can be Denton Cooley. Yes. And, uh, and you will deal with mm. deaths related to the operations you have done. It is an inevitable part of, the, of this field, right? That's the perfect word, it's inevitable. Fortunately, in this era and for your uh, fellow students in the era that they would be practicing, it's going to be quite uncommon. Mm -hmm. So what would you describe as the absolute best part of this uh, specialty? The best part, for me is um, when I finish the operation and I know it's gone very well. Mm -hmm. I know that uh, every bit of my training and experience has gone into it and it's gone exactly the way I wanted. Mm -hmm. And then I love it when I go by uh, on rounds at the end of the day and the patient is extubated, talking to me, uh, neurologically fine, 
and uh, and well overall, that's a, a great feeling. It's just a great feeling. And then when you discharge the patient five days later, uh, knowing what you've done inside, it's a, it's a terrific feeling. And then when you see them for the one month visit, it's a terrific feeling. And they tell you how grateful they are. It's all, those are all wonderful feelings that uh, your colleagues who go into surgery will experience. Now, a very common question, another common question is, what is really the, the quality of life of a cardiac surgeon? We know that residents uh, tend to have a hard time in a cardiac surgery residency, but after years pass, I'm talking about cardiac surgeons, what is their quality of life in general? Um, Lambros, it's, it's improved quite a bit. Mm -hmm. um, in my era, there was no angioplasty. Mm -hmm. You know, so if you had a heart attack, you needed an emergency operation. You couldn't go to the cath lab and have a cardiologist bust open the plaque and put a stent in. It wasn't available. Mm -hmm. So um, we operated day and night and night and day when I finished my training. Um, uh, you're uh, 32 years old when you finish your training in the U.S. I operated night and day weekends, quality of life was terrible. My kids were, were young and I had quality time with them, but not as much as other fathers did, mm -hmm. that's for sure. And, um, and I got called away. I got called back to the hospital all the time. Um, that has really improved tremendously. There aren't that many emergency cardiac operations now. It's mainly aortic dissection that brings you in in the middle of the night. Um, and the, the resident work hours are restricted now. That started in Europe and, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, transferred to the US, and I think that's good. There are no formal restrictions in work hours for attending surgeons, to my knowledge. But there are call schedules now, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, you're not susceptible to everybody who comes in with a heart attack because they go to the cath lab and they're taken care of there. So I think the quality of life now that I see is really quite good. Will there be nights that you know you've you've taken your uh, your children to a soccer match and you get called away? There will be, mm -hmm. and if that's a problem, you you need uh, a different field. And cardiac surgeons have this um, special dedication to their patients. I think every cardiac surgeon has that. Uh, if you're at a, at a soccer match or if, if your children are playing in a soccer match or something and your patient uh, from that day has a problem or is bleeding, you're going to go back. You're not going to leave it for the person on call. You feel this great uh, personal sense of responsibility to the patient on whom you operated. So yes, there will be times like that. But um, the, I see the younger surgeons going into our field now, and they're very hardworking. But I think the quality of life is quite adequate. So these uh, operations that you described earlier, uh, I know that some of them require to drain the blood outside of the patient, circulate it through the heart-lung machine, and then deliver it again as oxygenated blood to refuse again all the tissues. So how many, how many people are required for one of these operations to take place? Yeah, there, there's about seven or eight people in the operating room. Mm -hmm. There's one surgeon with one or two assistants. Mm -hmm. There's an anesthesi anesthesiologist with one assistant. And there's um, a technician specialist running the heart-lung machine. They're highly trained people and usually one assistant. Mm -hmm. And there are two nurses, one at the table and one circulating throughout the room, getting you valves and stitches and so on. So there's a lot of people in the room. Mm. There's a lot of people. So do you, find it, do you find restrictive the fact that it is hard for a cardiac surgeon to open his own clinic? It's not usually a thing that happens uh, in contrast to plastic surgeons, which uh, usually can develop their own clinics outside of the hospital. Do you find it restrictive the fact that you're, a, if I could say, bound to a hospital in order to work. Absolutely. Your point is very well taken. It is a hospital-based specialty. Mm -hmm. Yes. And um, there are some private practices 
of course, it still has to be done in the hospital. But more and more, the universities or hospitals uh, own, own the practices, the cardiac surgical practices. Do you think that this is going to change in the future? In general, what is the future of uh, cardiac surgery in a few words? Well, um, I think it's more and more regulated um, <clears throat> and more and more uh, guideline based. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not as much of a free for all where every surgeon could use his experience um, as the final deciding factor for what operation to do and how to do it. It's, it's much more regulated now. There are um, criteria for outcomes. Uh, so every hospital has their outcomes checked um, every year to be sure that the survival is adequate and it hasn't fallen out of range. Um, it's, it's a highly regulated environment. Mm -hmm. um, uh, yes. There's not as much freedom as there was in earlier years, but still, I mean, you decide how you're going to do the operation. There are many ways to do bypass surgery, many ways to do valve surgery, many ways to do aortic surgery. Uh, the final question that I'd like to ask is, what ethics should a cardiac surgeon have? What are the values that uh, someone should have in order to approach this uh, surgical field? Well, I think... Uh, a capacity for hard work. Mm -hmm. um, I think empathy is very important. Patients can tell if you care about them or not. Mm -hmm. I think empathy is a very important. And uh, I think truthfulness in interacting with patients and collegiality, you know, working well with your colleagues. Mm -hmm. When I was training, my professors were all in terrible competition with each other. Mm -hmm. It was a, a field of cowboys, you know, people with big egos. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but uh, I think now it's become more of a collegial field. Um, so I, th I think those are the uh, ethical qualities I would recommend. Thank you for making it in this interview. Really, it's, uh, I think many people will find value in your sayings and in our small discussion here. Thank you very much. My pleasure. Thank you. Bye-bye.